you're about to be in store for a very fun interview. We're going to talk to Jared Taylor. Jared Taylor graduated in 1973 from Yale University with a BA in philosophy. He is a, a self-avowed expert on race relations. He's the president of New Century Foundation and the author of Paved with Good Intentions, The Failure of Race Relations in Contemporary America. He, from time to time, describes himself as a racialist, which I thought was only a word that Ali G used and a racial realist. We're about to find out what all of that is, but he's also written an article on immigration and the different uh, ethnicity composition of the U.S. and how it is changing and how it's going to affect the U.S. Jared, welcome to the Young Turks. Thank you. I'm glad to be on the program. All right. Uh, this should be fun. Now, in 2042, we find out that uh, America is going to become a mi majority minority country, meaning that there will be more uh, what we call minorities now as opposed to what? Uh, you are apparently troubled by this. Why is that? Well, imagine the situation reversed. Uh, imagine, for example, that hundreds and thousands of poor whites were pouring across the border into Mexico, insisting on instruction in English rather than Spanish, and celebrating Fourth of July rather than Cinco de Mayo, buying up radio stations and newspapers and uh, broadcasting in English rather than Spanish, wanting voting papers uh, written in English rather than Spanish. And imagine that some of them were even muttering darkly about breaking off a chunk of northern Mexico and kicking out all the Mexicans and making it an all-white enclave. Do you think that uh, the Mexicans uh, would consider this a wonderful exercise in diversity and welcome it as cultural enrichment? Well, Jared, I have a couple of points to make about that. Those are interesting. Uh, I, you know, we don't have to use Mexico as an example because I can remember hundreds of thousands, millions of poor white people pouring into a country. That country was called America when the Irish and the Italians came in let alone many other white ethnicities. And at the time, people said, oh, no, this is going to destroy a once great country. But it didn't. It made it stronger. Did that not do anything to convince you that perhaps immigration might not be such a bad idea? It depends largely on where it's from. Oh. People often, oh, yes, don't forget. You say that you will tell me, and you're right, that uh, despite the great reservations about the Irish and the Italians, uh, they integrated just fine. And after about three or four generations, it doesn't make any difference where you're from in Europe, but in terms of uh, college education, uh, household income, likelihood to marry outside of your original ethnicity, all those groups become indistinguishable. And people will say, okay, that means that the Haitians and the Guatemalans coming in now will be no different. That overlooks one very important thing, and that's what makes people uncomfortable, namely race. There were two racial groups here long before the ethnic showed up at the turn of the 19th and 20th century, American Indians and blacks who are still not integrated in the way that the European ethnics did. Therefore, it's false to assume that just what happened to the Italians is the same thing that's going to happen to the Guatemalans. All right, so let me try to understand that. You're saying that, uh, yeah, the Irish and the Italians and the Polish and the Germans, they all came in, but they were white. Okay, that's so right. we all integrated fine because white people rock. Uh, but well, only, <laughs> no, no, no. It's because race is one of the most serious fault lines in any society. You will find that attempts to assimilate will generally work if they cross racial lines so long as language enclaves don't develop to the extent that they do, say, in Quebec and Canada. If you have a very substantial language enclave, you do not get assimilation across language lines. Race right. is a very, very difficult thing wherever you look anywhere in the world. All right, so let me try to understand that. In America, we have been assimilating different races for centuries now, including blacks, Latinos, Asians, etc. Are you saying America failed? I, I thought we were a shining success, a light onto the world. Why is it? Why is it that there's no school in America that passes what's called the lunchroom litmus test? In other words, it's all very well to have people who are Hispanics, Asians, whites, blacks go to the same school, but they sort themselves out into very clearly racially demarcated groups as soon as they get the chance. We are required to be racially integrated in terms of the workplace, in terms of our schools, but when Americans are left to their own devices, for example, if they go to church, in the United States today, more than 95% of church congregations are at least 80% one race. That's because in their own decisions, when they're left to their own devices, people do not want diversity. People are far more comfortable with people exactly like themselves. All right, Jared, let me explain a couple of ways that you're wrong. Uh, number one, uh, that, 
that, well, first of all, explain how my facts are wrong. I, I'm going to tell you. You just said that uh, in almost every school, I, I thought maybe you even said in every school in the country, that people are school. virtually every school in the country, they're segregated along race lines. That has not been my experience at all. I understand that some are, okay? I, I'm being a racial realist there, if you will, right? But I've gone to many schools, including my own, where that was not the case. I went to a school in New Jersey where we had Asians, Indians, Koreans, uh, Jewish, white, black, everybody sat in the same lunch table. <gasps> and you know what? Here at the uh, Young Turks, well, we have no, a Latino, no, 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 we have no, 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 an Armenian, no. we have a Turk, we have a white guy, we have a Jew, we have a black, and we all work together. It's crazy. Hey, and let me ask no, you this, Jack. Hold on, hold on. Let me let's finish get back the question. To your high okay. school. All right, let me get back to this. Uh, so let me get you to the question, okay? Now, whether we mix, as we do here at the Young Turks or in my high school, or, or whether we don't mix, in some of the examples you point out. Either way, this diversity has only strengthened America. The results, the, as they would say, the proof is in the pudding. America's been the number one superpower, and it's still the number one superpower. So how, you know, you guys always talk about this, this, this disintegration of society because of the races don't mix. First of all, they do mix. Second of all, even if they didn't, we still win because we have that diversity. Tell me, tell me, at what point in America's history was it the most dominant power? At what point in America's history did it have the world's largest proportion of industrial ec and economic might? Tell me, when was that? All right, well, let me tell you. It was, well, it was in 1945. No, in no, 1945, no. <laughs> we were still 20 years away from abolishing a system, an immigration system that was designed specifically to keep the country majority white. Jared, do you hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's be factual here. Since no, I'm trying time, to be factual. Jared, let me, under, let me explain something. Let me explain. No, let me ask you a question, okay? Do you purposely twist the facts, or do you twist just not the know the facts? Let me explain something to you. Do you, think, do you not realize that we had the highest percentage of wealth in the world in 1945 because Europe and Asia were decimated by World War II? Or do you ignore that fact on purpose? And do you ignore the fact that we boomed and were the number one superpower, and after uh, demolishing the Soviet Union, in fact, our height was in the 1990s, until, of course, no, Bush no, came no, in. No, and no, that, no, that, no, no, those facts no. are conveniently ignored by you. Did we or did we not have the highest no. percentage in 1945 because the rest of the world was destroyed? Do you understand that, that fact? <laughs> you know, if you stop shouting and listening, you might learn something. <laughs> yeah, fact tell is, me about fact, it, Mr. Racialist. The, fa the fact uh, Mr. What did you call me? Racialist. You, you call Mr. yourself Mr. Racialist. racialist. Right. Uh, that is something, that's a word that's been used to describe me. The proper term that I use for myself is a race realist. In fact, of course, the fact that 1945, Europe and Japan were in bad shape, of course that's part of it. But there is no question that up until 1965, we were still very much the dominant power, and it is as our country has become increasingly diverse, I don't necessarily wish to connect the two, our proportion of wealth and power has declined quite dramatically. Now, you say that diversity is a strength. Without diversity, we would have no such thing as race riots. We would have no such thing as racial discrimination suits. We would have no such thing as race riots in high schools where blacks and Hispanics Wait, meet up. Jared, I gotta ask you furthermore, furthermore, let me finish. All right, go ahead, go ahead. We would have no such thing as prisons in California and Texas that are kept in a constant state of lockdown because if the black and Hispanic prisoners are allowed to mix, they will be at each other's throats. You cannot point to a single thing in any kind of macroeconomic sense and say the presence of 30 million Mexicans in this country has made our country stronger. I All can of that point is to pure, pure myth-making. All, right, all right, Jared, let me, look, you've said so many how things does, that are absurd. Let me, let me ask you a couple of questions. Say, yeah. All right, let me ask you a couple of questions. All right, sure. you say uh, we wouldn't have any race riots if we didn't have any different races. Well, I suppose that's true. Should this, does that mean we should do some ethnic cleansing? And of get rid course not. Because the Germans wouldn't have had any problems with the Jews if they had just finished, you know, what was happening in World War II. They wouldn't have had any problem with the Jews, right? Because there wouldn't be any. My point is, by adding more ingredients, more fault lines, we are only brewing trouble. We never had a black and Mexican race riot until we had large populations of Mexicans. If we, we never had, kept the we, Mexicans out, we never would have had this problem in the first place. But we did have race riots before the Mexicans came in. Could that have been because we had slavery and then impoverished, impoverished the African-American population here? Or did that have nothing to do with it? It was just the blacks going crazy. 
you have race riots in Britain, you have race riots in Canada. The history of blacks in those countries is radically different from the history of blacks in the United States, and you still have precisely the same problems of any kind of multiracial society, namely conflict and tension. It's part of human nature. If you look around the world, those places where people are most diligently killing each other are precisely those places where diverse populations are trying to share the same territory, whether it's diversity of religion, race, language, or nationality. So diversity Jared, is I a source understand. of tension, not of strength. No, I want to understand your vision of the world, okay? Because apparently you don't believe in our vision of America where we all come together and we live together. So how does your vision work? We all go into our separate enclaves, and we say, all right, this is white America, and presumably we either kick people out, or I don't know what we do with them, but they all go into their separate countries, and they don't let anybody else into their countries, and nobody ever mixes, and then everything is rock and roll? Is that, is that the vision? I have only recommended two policies to the United States. One is to stop immigration. We don't need no more people. We already have 300 million people in this country. When's the last time you were driving down the road and you said to yourself, gosh, there are just not enough cars on the highway. I wish there were more. When I drove across the country in oh, Kansas, I bet you in wish Pennsylvania. More, you know? wish to see more and more cars, Texas, I'm sure. Well, you're the only one in America who feels that way, believe me. We have 300 million people. The Census Bureau is telling us if current immigration continues, by the year 2050, we'll have 450 million people. Another 150 million people. We're trying to talk seriously about energy independence, for example. We're trying to talk seriously about environmental protection. How is that going to be helped by another 150 million people? So for a host of reasons, I would stop immigration right where it is. The other thing that I would say, the only other policy advocate, advocate I would be, is to eliminate all anti-discrimination laws. I believe in complete freedom of association. And if you wish to associate only with red-headed duck, duck hunters, that should be your right. If you're a private employer, you should have the... the employee people that uh, that suit you the best. So let me understand that, Jared. If Greyhound yeah. bus says, hey, listen, uh, we wish to have black people sit on the back of the bus, that's A-OK. -okay. No. If you are a monopoly supplier, you have no right to discriminate. If you are the monopoly electric company, no, you don't have the right to say, well, we're going to uh, sell electricity only to right-handed people. But if you are a private individual, just as you have the right to choose your own spouse for good reasons, bad reasons, or no reasons at all, if you are a private employer, you should have the right to choose your employees for good reasons, bad reasons, no reasons at all. If they turn out to be good workers, so much the better for you. If, right. by, if because of irrational discrimination, you hire only Asians, for example, and it turns out Asians can't do the job, your company will fail. But you should have the right to, to discriminate. All right, so uh, we're talking to Jared Taylor. I want to ask you about, you know, whether I disagree with that is a, a different, different question, and I do, but I don't want to get into all of that. But you, you mentioned that you, we should have these races, as, as far as I could tell, separate, but no, those two things I don't... I just told you. I just okay. told you. No, because you were saying that once we put the Mexicans and the blacks together, they have race rights. Once we put I the whites and the blacks you. together, we have race rights, so we should stop. Why don't we hate? Why can't we do it the other way? If in 2042 the minorities are going to be the majority, why can't we stop white folks from coming into the country? We could, I, I, I just told you I want to stop everyone from coming into the country. In fact, when we have a majority non-white in this country, it's entirely possible that by that point they will be able to pass through legislation that will uh, oh provide for financial compensation for slavery and financial compensation for invasion of the, of, the, of, of uh, what used to be Mexico and is now part of the southwestern United States. Yes, they'll be perfectly capable of passing laws of that kind. All right, Jared. I don't look forward to that, but that's certainly a possibility. But what I've told you is I believe in complete freedom of association. Those who wish to mix, God bless them. Those who don't wish to mix, they should, have, they should be entirely free to exercise that right. All right, and we're going to give you some examples of Jared's thought on that, but I want to remind everybody, Jared Taylor is the president of New Century Foundation. He's the author of Paved with Good Intentions, The Failure of Race Relations in Contemporary America. Uh, I know that you have some issues with mixing, uh, Jared, because uh, you said apparently in uh, May of 2005, I want my grandchildren to look like my grandparents. I don't want them to look like Anwar Sadat or Fu Manchu or Whoopi Goldberg. Entirely uh, correct. Okay. You want your, uh, I would prefer that my children look like my, my grandchildren look like my, my grandparents. Many, many people in America, not just whites, feel that same way. Okay, so you don't, why, like if, you're, if want... your daughter wanted to marry a black guy, you'd be like, well, look, I don't want my granddaughters looking like Whoopi Goldberg. I'd ask, you'd ask her to reconsider. 
That's entirely correct. And what's wrong with that? Okay, no, I'm just getting it on, on the record yeah. as to what your no, feelings my, are. My, no ancestors, my ancestors have been Europeans for 40,000 years. So we like it that way. I don't, I'd don't. i be very surprised if my children decided to marry outside of their race. Well, I'd no, be surprised, kind of, too, if they grew up in your household. Uh, All well, right, so, Jared, let me ask you this yeah. uh, question. Uh, sure. We also have this quote from you. Uh, quote, there is no scale on which racial differences can all be ranked so as to draw across-the-board conclusions about racial superiority or inferiority. That sounds pretty good. B but, quote, it is certainly true that in some important traits, intelligence, law-abidingness, sexual restraint, academic performance, resistance to disease, whites can be considered, considered superior to blacks at the same time in exactly these same traits, North Asians appear to be superior to whites. Do you really believe that? Well, why would you not believe that? That's where all the evidence points. All of the evidence, all of the evidence buttresses those positions. There's overwhelming evidence for that. Why would you, looking around the world today as we see it, why would you think for a moment that Haitians or Australian Aborigines, on average, are as intelligent as Japanese? Why would you think that? There's no evidence for it whatsoever. Jared, can you really be this stupid? Because look, <laughs> oh, look uh, if look, we look, stopped look, if in the turn start. of the millennium, okay, and we said, hey, look, the Arab Empire rules the world. They're the largest empire in the world. These little people in villages in Europe, they're so pathetically stupid. How could they possibly compare to the Arabs who are the geniuses of the world? Again, if you stop shouting, perhaps you will calm down and learn something. When, <laughs> About how have the, white people when, are superior. But I'm not yeah. white, so I, I go ahead. To teach, when, Master. When have the Australian Aborigines contributed anything of significance to world culture? And let me ask you once again, why would you consider? Look at the look at the 5,000 years of the past history. You ask me a question. Look, you look, understand look, the kind of on, history? Look, 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 look. I think there's supposed to be two people talking here. You called up to interview me, not to go on a monologue. Uh -huh. yeah. when, you, when you have, why would you, why would you even for a moment think that Australian Aborigines have contributed and have signs of the same intelligence as, as Japanese? Okay, Jared, you asked me a question. That? You asked me a question. Let me okay, answer that. Why okay. would you think that? Yes, I'm going to answer that. Because I have studied history and I have seen the Egyptian Empire rise and then fall. Roman Empire rise, fall, Greek Empire, Persian Empire, Arab Empire, Chinese Empires, American Empire, European Empires. I have seen all the different races with great empires rise and fall. And if you stopped at any point and said, hey, you know what? It looks like the Egyptians are the greatest people on earth. And these Aborigines in America or in uh, France or in England, oh, by God, they are pathetic and they've accomplished nothing in history at all. Well, then, yes, you would be right at that point in time. But you see how history changes and different empires rise and fall at different times? And then if just looking at today and saying, well, the Australian Aborigines haven't done anything, so they must be stupid, is tell in me, fact the me. really stupid thing to do. Tell me about the Australian Aborigine Empire. <laughs> you know, you're an idiot. <laughs> okay, well, I just talk, told you uh, that there was no American Empire before the Egyptians, when the Egyptians and the Romans were in charge. You know, I know he hung up. God, people like this, they get, they're so simple-minded, they're so pathetically stupid. Because they get this one point in their head and they think they're clever. They're like, oh, well, the Aborigines didn't do anything, so I must be right. Black people must be stupid. Well, what about when black people ruled the world, when the Egyptians were in charge? Oh, damn, I didn't think of that. Or if I did, I'm going to go back to the Australian Aborigine point. Because I don't have another point. God, you know... These people, and look, they're on the right side of the political spectrum, okay? They're not on the left side. They're on the right side. They hate America. They hate the idea of us mixing together. The melting pot and all the different ethnicities, they can't stand that idea. They despise what we stand for. I don't mean what we stand for in terms of the Young Turks or progressives or me or J.R. or Jesus or Anna or anyone else. I mean they despise the core of America, that we could all be in the same country, we could all work together, and we can make it work, and we could be number one. And we are number one. You know, uh, the right wing always tells us, oh, the left hate America. What are you talking about? We love that we all came together and became the number one superpower. That's because we work together. But clowns like Jared Taylor have a point about uh, Aborigines, in his, Aborigines in Australia, and that's all they got, man, because they want to desperately 
justify their own racism. If he hadn't hung up, I would have loved to ask him about what stats he has, what facts he has, what studies he has about law-abidingness. Law-abidingness all across the world? Really? Are more people in jail in America or in African countries? What do you mean law-abidingness? Which laws? Which countries? Now, these people are absolute and utter clowns. And he's not a race realist. He's a racist. By the way, David Duke loves him. It doesn't mean that that is all end-all be-all to him, but David Duke thinks Jared Taylor is a genius.